my name is uh, Kai Hansen. I'm the senior program lead for West Working at Zalando. And uh, well, Zalando is West Working for Empowered Teams. And again, uh, late Friday afternoon, you've got like you did lots of colorful stuff here in the maze. So you were really hands on on product development. That's great. And it seems like we are now having a sort of a take off into a, let's say more abstract theory land again. So uh, let's see. But before I get into the framework, or actually the process model, uh, you will need some context for it because we kind of just view it process and ignoring the organizational setup, for example. So last year, Zalando um, had a real, well, like almost every year, Zalando underwent a big restructuring. <laughs> and the, like, the 15,000 employees now, including the logistics folks, uh, this is really a big company, of course. And what happened? Um, basically, two, let's say, rather different mindsets were merged together. The commercial department and the tech, the central tech department. And uh, when I say tech, I include not only engineering, but also product management and design uh, over there, and also analytics um, and commercial roles like uh, logistics, customer care, business development, marketing, uh, buying, and so on. So there were lots in the past, there have been lots of priority conflicts, right? Uh, stakeholders requesting features and projects and tech teams responding. Uh, that's a mix, and you have uh, lots of trouble for scale. That's any further. So the new paradigm for teams uh, is now dedicated multidisciplinary teams with a clear customer focus. Those are basically the empowered teams I'm talking about. So this this is the unit. As far as I understood, Felix just now they have basically uh, channeled this innovation process into. Uh, like let's say a parallel track to the whole company, we decentralized innovation. So our aspiration is to have every team that can build stuff that impacts customers uh, go through this process. And every team have their own innovation agenda basically. So zooming a little bit into the team, uh, those are the main characteristics of such a multidisciplinary team. So Agile well, responsibility, uh, that's great, right? So you can, can uh, design the user experience or the customer experience from end to end also, going along with technical uh, responsibility, of course. Uh, Decision-making authority, that's really a big thing. That's what actually empowers the team. So they decide what to build and what problems to focus on. Uh, more details to that later. A result of this is full accountability. So the teams and their lead, by the way, this, this guy with the funny helmet up there, that's uh, the dedicated owner for this role. And he or she is responsible for this team. And every team has a single focus. So not spread across multiple components, customer problems, whatever. It Good focus. And one great example to illustrate this is sizing. So Zalando identified sizing as one of the biggest customer problems. And we have actually a big team focusing just on this problem. So zooming in even a bit more, um, the roles in the given team. So actually, well, those are basically six generic roles or or skill sets, uh, you could say. So design, product, and engineering, that's the only trinity, right? That's what we all know and work with. Um, during the change, also commercial and operations roles were included, when it made sense, of course. This is um, not always the case, but it's, they have great input. Uh, Philip also mentioned that there come great ideas out of uh, customer care, for example. So why not? have someone specializing there. And of course, analytics. Uh, that's very important along the whole way. So now I come to a very exciting part because I don't know if the sound works. Uh, because I brought you an actual video um, that we use internally to com 
communicate and introduce this framework. And that's that. And the sound will be. to solve. 
they have many needs, many problems, and there might be many opportunities, but what's the one you want to nail now? Then, then the problem is here, you go into design. Again, this, right, this is the classic already, like problem space, solution space. Now we go into the solution space and try to brainstorm as many solutions as possible, iterate, test, prototype, everything, like the whole toolbox, to figure out which solution is the best for the customer. And by the way, this uh, thing is also like is it, is it valuable, feasible, usable, and viable. This is all addressed in the design phase, basically. Deliver is when you go for the solution at scale, when you align other teams, when you resolve dependencies. And the guiding question there is how do, uh, how do we best build and launch the so chosen solution and measure its impact on customer experience? So that's something that's sometimes forgotten like measuring impact. Many teams, especially when they are under pressure, uh, just deliver and forget, right? On to the next project. That's an anti-pattern that's not healthy. Uh, so we actually encourage to measure the impact and see, hey, did you solve the customer problem? Did you find? So let's zoom in a little bit deeper. Um, Let's, let's assume you start uh, on a green field. Uh, that's, that's a risky assumption, I know. Uh, many projects, uh, products actually, are, are already live and running, and you start maybe in a different phase, but let's say uh, um, you start with Discover. Then your input, obviously, are the company strategy, OKRs, KPIs, hunches, opinions, experts, market trends, whatever you have, data about customer behavior. So all of this goes into Discover and the team uh, uses this to guide their research, basically. So, and, and in the end, we'll zoom in uh, deeper in a minute. And the output of this are condensed customer insights. Basically, you could say basic opportunity, it could be problems, opportunities, pains, uh, so yeah, we'll have a list of that. In Discover, uh, usually engineering and operations are not so much involved, but, and this is very important, this is designed for the whole team. So the whole multidisciplinary team should go through this process together. Of course, engineers are uh, busy doing other stuff, like maintenance, delivering on dependencies, refactoring, migration, all this fun stuff, but you should involve engineers as early as possible, and that's a discovery. And look for the engineers that are that really are interested in doing this and uh, want to be involved. That's great input. So you do discover, this is user research, um, quantitative, qualitative. So you really explore um, and get to know your customers. Again, not, not randomly, you have a lot of context given through OKRs and company strategy, uh, but you, you think openly and explore the problems. Then, step four, you condense the insights and take those customer insights as input into a team defined session. You may have a list of, I don't know, 20 customer problems. Let's say customer problem and also you have security space, whatever you can address, you have impact and you have impact on customer experience. Then you leverage all perspectives on the team. Like this is why uh, jumping ahead, every role is driving this. It has to be involved. You have to have to clearly align everyone on this customer problem. If you fail here, uh, you're planning for failure because then you don't know what you're solving about uh, or you go into different directions. So you really want to select and define that customer problem well. This can be a 90 minute meeting. It can take a bit longer too. So more critical stakeholders um, and then like no hidden agendas, right? So you get clear what you will be solving. All the other um, problems you've discovered before, they go onto a problem roadmap. 
So please no feature projects roadmaps. Uh, if you want to have a roadmap, make a problem or so opportunity. Um, so you select one problem statement as a team together. And then the fun part starts, design. This is what I think you spent the most time on here. Um, so you have this aligned problem statement and you start generating solutions, right? While crazy brainstorming, everything that's somehow thinkable. And then you use every practice in the book, right? From like paper prototyping up to, we call it live concept testing. Uh, Maybe a word about this. Uh, usually, like in Zalando, we don't use the word MVP anymore because it's so often misunderstood. Um, MVPs are there for learning, not to release a skinny version of the product. Uh, so, in live concept tests or MVPs, if you're afraid of the new startup, I don't recommend this, then this lives in design too. So, you do live concept testing, real data, but you do everything. This is like a huge toolbox out there. It highly depends on what, what you're working on. Uh, also including the customers again, right? So you want to test your prototypes with customers, actual customers. You are lucky when you have internal customers because then it's easy to schedule a meeting for an interview or a test or whatever. And when you have external customers that happen to live in France, well, let's say, then you might have to further that. Um, yeah, in the end of design, design is all about, like Kagan would say, decreasing risk. Um, we say build up confidence, uh, so it's the same thing. Uh, you, and, and by the way, you produce evidence, you produce data that, that you can later use to prove why you chose that solution and not the other. And in the end, you're so confident that this one solution that emerged from the design process is the one that um, you make the step into deliver. And this is where stuff gets really expensive because there you get, you build, well, then, then you go into the production system basically and have to build a scalable solution. Ah, sorry, core roads, well, no surprise here, design and product drive uh, design. The other roads are still involved for, for brainstorming. Um, so deliver. You have a solution identified, and now it's about quick execution, right? This is where you write the tickets and everything, and then, uh, of course, I, I hope I don't have to say this. No big bang release, please. Um, so we try to keep the first release. We call it small to release fast because of. Of course, this is also a learning thing, right? Your first release, the solution that goes live, that's something you learn a lot from, uh, especially about stability and scalability and all this. Um, but this is the, like, the good thing is you're really confident that this is something that will have impact because everything led up to this. Yet you still might fail, right? The first release, what's that? Uh, you learn a lot. And then this whole thing is a cycle, right? So guess what? Um, if you solve the customer problem by obviously measuring it, uh, nope. Then either you have learnings that, that, well, that say you better pivot or something, or you go another route with the cycle. And it spins faster and faster as the team learns to tackle that problem better and better. Uh, if you solve the customer problem, then uh, and analytics, yeah, analytics is uh, also driving here. Uh, then, of course, uh, if it's good enough for now, you move on to the next customer problem. I think that's almost already it. Yeah, that's uh, circle again. And very abstract, but keep in mind, we had to, this is not only designed for, for tech people, it should also it should be inclusive so that everyone on the team can use this vocabulary and work this way. So uh, that's, in a nutshell, our 4D process.